Hello everyone, this is Utkarsh from Testbook Skill Academy and in today's session we are going to focus on list in Python. So let's look at the agenda for the day. We are going to understand what is list in Python followed by that we are going to understand what are the different list methods in Python and we'll see the practical implementation of the different list methods in Jupyter Notebook. So without further ado, let's get started. Let us understand what are list in Python. So list is an ordered collection of elements of same or different data type. By ordered collection, we simply mean that, that the elements in the list will be indexed as in each and every list element will be an index. Now there are a few more points that we should understand. The list elements are enclosed in square brackets and they are separated by comma. So there can be n number of elements inside the list separated by comma and the entire all the elements of the list will be enclosed in the square brackets. Now indexing and slicing can be performed on the list. What is the reason? Why are we able to perform indexing and slicing on list? The primary reason is because list is an ordered collection of elements. So if it is ordered we can perform indexing and slicing. Now list also happens to be mutable. Mutable means that list elements can be changed. As in we can add more elements, we can remove certain elements and we can change the elements as well. Now list can have duplicates element as well. List can be here multiple copies of the same element. Here are few examples of list. For example, in the first instance we have a list of cities. Here I have comma separated cities like Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai and Kolkata. Likewise in the second instance I have a list of fruits. The fruits are chosen are apple, grapes, mango, guava and kiwi. Of the list element we have to be mindful about the data type of the elements in the list. If the data type happens to be a string the list element needs to be enclosed in single double or triple quotes. But if the data type happens to be let's say an integer, a float, maybe a boolean value or a none value or a complex number then we don't need to mention the single or double quotes. Now let us understand the different list methods that we have in python. So list support n number of different methods. The common ones are append method. So what is the use of append method? Append method adds an element to the list at the end. Next we have extend method. Extend method is very much similar to the append method. It also adds an element to the list at the end but from an iterable. Means the data type from which we are adding the elements to the list must be an iterable. So what are the different types of iterables? We can have strings, we can have list, we can have tuples, we can have set, we can have dictionary and we can even use the range function as an iterable. Next method is insert. So as the name sounds, insert method inserts an element at a specified index in the list. Next method is index. So index method fetches element corresponding to a particular index and that index must be passed as an argument. Sort method as the name sound sorts the element in ascending or descending order based on a parameter. Pop method is used to remove an element from the list. This is also based on index but we can use it without index as well. Now count method counts the frequency of the element in the list. So having understood these methods let's see them in action in the Jupyter Notebook. So as we have discussed list is an ordered collection of elements. So let's see few examples of list. Let's see few examples of list. Here I am creating a list A, a list of integers. I can print A, I can check the data type of A. And it displays a list, right? Now here I have mentioned list is an ordered collection of elements of same or different data type. As of now the list that you see over here, all the elements are of same data type. So we can call this list as a homogeneous list. Homogeneous list implies that all the elements are of same data type. I can create another list maybe 
with elements belonging to different data types let's say i'm adding the element as python then i'm adding maybe uh, 20 then i'm adding let's say 3.87 i'm adding true so as you can see the elements belong to different data types right i'm adding welcome so these are the elements belonging to different data type and then i'm adding none as well i can print b and i can also print the type of b please observe a the list a happens to be a homogeneous list what can we say about the list b list b happens to be heterogeneous heterogeneous list implies that the element belongs to different data type the first element as we can observe is a string second element is an integer third element happens to be a float fourth element happens to be a boolean value next element is again a string and the last element is a none type data type right so these are examples of list as you can clearly observe that the elements are separated by comma and are enclosed in square brackets even in the variable b the elements are enclosed in square brackets and are separated by comma so let's see the different list methods the first method as we have discussed is append method right so append method adds an element to the list at the end of the list all right so let's see here i'm writing the name of few startups and because i'm creating a list so i'll be using the square bracket right these are few startups right and i'm going to add another so first uh, i'm going to add another uh, startup into this list so first i'm going to print this list as you can see i can clearly see the list as the output right now i'm going to add startups dot append i'm going to append another startup uh, let's say i'm going to add misho as in uh, the word misho has been appended to the list at the end i can add an, i can add another element in the list at the end right so i can add another startups i'm going to add another startup which is swiggy all right so every time i add another startup in the list it gets added in the end so this is what append method is used for it adds an element to the end of the list now let's understand the next method which happens to be extend extend is very much similar to the append method there is a very subtle difference that we need to understand extend method adds an element to the list at the end from an iterable all right now what is this iterable this iterable can be a string it can be a list tuple set dictionary or even range function so as of now i'm considering a list of integers right these are the integers that i have now first i'm printing r and then i'm extending then i'm extending r with can i extend a number can i extend a number in the list directly no i'll end up getting an error what's the reason because integer is not an iterable integer is not an iterable so i cannot use an integer into the extend function so what is the way out first of all i'll be using the same example and then i'll show you how to extend the elements this is my list right this is my list r now let's understand how the extend function works so here i'm writing r dot extend I am passing the elements 50 and 60 inside the list. Because of the square bracket structure, we can see that 50 and 60 are the elements of the list. And then I am simply going to print the value of R. We can clearly observe that 50 and 60, the values have been added at the end. But please carefully observe, is the list structure retained inside the list? No. 
as in the elements are added from inside this list correct the elements are added from inside this list likewise i can even extend a tuple now in tuple we do have the elements of uh, same or different data type tuple is also an ordered collection of elements there are two major differences when it comes to list and tuple tuple is immutable and tuple elements are stored in round brackets right here i'm adding the elements let's say 15 and 25 and then i'm printing r so again 15 and 25 will be added to the list at the end they'll be added in the list at the end all right now let's understand the difference between append and extend difference between append and extend let's understand the difference here i do have a list let's say the elements are 5 10 and 20 all right these are the elements of the list maybe i'm choosing a different variable let's say i'm going with the variable w so here i have a list named w i have the elements as 5 10 and 20 first i'm going to print w then i'm going to append the element let's say i'm going to append a list list contains the number 31 and 32 then i'm going to print w again i'll be using the extend function this time i'm using the extend function and i'm adding the elements 33 and 34 please observe the difference between append and extend i'm appending a list and i'm extending a list so when the list w was extended with another list the entire structure of the another list is retained in the output whereas when i'm extending another list in the list w the elements from the another list has been added to the list in the end as in both append and extend function are adding the elements at the end the only difference is whatever we write in the append function that is added to the end of the list as it is but whatever we are writing inside the iterable in the extend function gets added to the list so the outer iterable structure gets broken down all right uh, let's see another difference so uh, here i'm choosing the variable let's say t so t is a list of uh, subjects maybe so here i have python sql and uh, maybe r programming as well right first i'm going to print the variable t and then i'll be appending the list t with a string i'm appending it with let's say django and then i'm printing t and then i'm extending it with i'm extending the list with the string flask please observe the difference so when i have applied the append function on the list whatever is mentioned inside the append function is added to the end of the list as it is but when i have applied the extend function to the list and the argument passed in both extend and append function happens to be a string right so the string structure is broken down into its individual characters when it comes to extend function whereas when it comes to append function whatever is mentioned in the append function is added as it is without any change at the end of the list so these are a few common differences between append and extend function let's proceed to the next function which is insert so as the name sound as the name sounds insert function is used to insert an element in the list it takes two parameters namely index and element first we have to specify the index at which we are supposed to insert the element right so inserts an element at a specified index elements previously present at that index are shifted one index towards their right all right element which are previously present at that index means whatever the index that i'm passing as the argument element previously present at that particular index and all the elements to the right of it are shifted one index towards their right let's see the example suppose uh, here i have a list of words
here I have a list of words right first I'm going to print the words then I'm going to append insert then I'm going to insert words dot insert I'm going to insert at index 2 let's say the word that I'm going to insert is India I'm going to insert the element India at the index 2 and then again I'm going to print the words please observe when I'm printing the words list how many elements does the word list contain it contains five elements right how many elements or words does the list words contain it contains five elements so I can write length of words over here as five so what is the element present at index 2 what is the element present at index 2 we can simply print this words of 2 right I can simply print words of 2 over here so words of 2 is going to return by because the indexing starts from 0 so the index of the word high is 0 index of the element game is 1 index of the element by happens to be 2 so when I'm inserting India at the index 2 so the elements from by and the elements towards its right will be shifted one index towards the right please observe this previously element present at index 2 was by now once I've inserted India at the index 2 all the elements starting from index 2 and beyond are shifted one index towards their right now in the current list implementation what is the element present at index 2 the element present at index 2 is India all right now I can insert another element I can insert let's say at uh, index 5 so where is the index 5 so this is index 0 1 this is 1 2 3 4 5 okay let me consider uh, 3 over here or 4 <coughs> Brazil all right and then I can simply print words please observe the difference what was the previous element present at index 4 the previous element present at index 4 was hello so the words hello and welcome are shifted one index towards their right to accommodate the presence of or to welcome the presence of the word Brazil so this is how the index uh, this is how the insert function works all right let's understand the next method next list method which is index so index method returns the index of the first occurrence of the element from the left from the left all right and indexes start at zero so let's see the practical implementation suppose uh, I, have a lif uh, I have a list of laptops so I'm calling this uh, laptop here I have laptops from maybe HP Asus Dell, Apple and Lenovo. Here I've created the list of laptops, right? Let me print this. Here I've created a list of laptops. Now I want to check laptop. First I'm writing laptop.index. I want to check the index of the word Asus. So we can clearly see the index of HP is 0. The index of Asus is 1. Now I want to know the index of apple. So index of apple is 3. Alright. Next. I want to know the index of the word. Lenovo. So the index of the word Lenovo is 4. This is 0. This is 1. This is 2, 3 and 4. Alright. So the word Lenovo is present at index 4. Now likewise I want to know the index of the word HP. So HP is present at the 0th index, right? HP is present at the 0th index. Now let us understand the implementation of the method sort. So first let's understand what the sort method is doing. Sort method simply sorts the list in ascending or descending order based on the parameter reverse. So let me create let's say a list of integers. Maybe I'm having a list of numbers. The numbers are 45. 30, 56, 78, 23, 10, 74, 82. These are the numbers that I have, right? First, I'm going to print these numbers. 
so now i've printed the numbers now how to sort them in ascending or descending order i just have to write num dot sort so this is going to sort it is going to sort the num list in ascending order please observe it is sorting the list in ascending order right ascending order implies from the smallest value towards the greatest value or the largest value now in the sort method there is a parameter called reverse when reverse is set to false by default reverse is set to false so it is sorting in ascending order right if i want to sort the numbers in descending order what is the way out i just have to mention reverse is equal to true that's it and now if i'm going to print the num so here all i need to write is please observe here the output obtained is in descending order right what have i used i've used the reverse parameter and i've set this to true so it is printing the numbers in the reverse order so this is how i can sort the list this is how i can sort the list so let's understand the next method which is pop so pop method removes the element at a specified index and in case no index is mentioned it removes the last element let's understand how the pop method is working suppose i have a list h this is again a list of integers maybe i have 10 20 30 15 25 and 35 these are the these are my list elements right first i'm going to print the list h and then i'm going to apply the pop method h dot pop i'm going to pop 3 and then i'm printing h so what was the element present at the third index this is simply removing element at index 3 this is simply removing the element at index 3 so this is element at index 0 1 2 3 so please observe the element 15 has been removed from this list now in this list in this particular list if i just apply the pop method directly without passing any parameters without specifying any index and then i'm printing h and then i'm printing h please observe so if i don't pass any parameter in the pop method by default it removes the last element it removes the last element from the list it is removing the last element from the list all right now from the list that i have now as in i'm talking about this list with the elements 10 20 30 and 25 again if i'm applying the pop method here i'm applying the pop method and the argument that i'm setting is 2 all right means the index is 2 and now i'm printing it so what is the element present at index 2 at index 2 i have the element 30 so 30 will be removed all right i hope the pop method is clear to everyone next let's understand the count method so count method returns the count that is frequency of the element passed as an argument so for as in seeing the practical implementation of count method i'll be creating a list that contains duplicate elements right so that i'll have the count of the element which is even more than 1 so let's say again uh, i'm considering a list of numbers the numbers are these are the numbers that i have right these are the numbers that i have now if i want to print the count of num dot count of 7 how many times 7 is occurring in this list 1 2 3 4 and 5 so the count of the element 7 is 5 likewise n dot count of let's say 13 how many times is the element 13 appearing in this list it is appearing twice we can confirm 13 is over here and 13 also happens to be over here likewise i want to print the count of the element 1 how many times is 1 appearing in this list one is appearing just once right 
likewise what if i pass an element which is not in the list suppose i'm passing the element 45 45 is not a member of this list right 45 is not a member of this list so here the count happens to be zero uh, so guys i'm hoping that uh, the list methods namely append extend insert index sort pop and count these methods are clear to everyone so now we have reached the end of this session if you guys have any questions you can mention them in the comments below and I'll be pleased to answer them. Thank you and I hope to see you guys in the next session.